Hello and welcome to your daily dose of commentary. Today we start with a topic, are gamers getting ripped off or is it just business as usual? Do you have an opinion on the consistent increase of video game prices these days? Starfield is $120 AUD, Red Dead Redemption 1 being a full price game, even though it's just a re-release of an older game. I find it ridiculous that we are expected to pay these amounts simply for entertainment. A company will seek to charge the amount of money that will give them the most amount of money, I suppose. Red Dead Redemption 1, despite being re-released basically unchanged as a full price game, like was it $50 or whatever, it was still like the top of the charts for sales. People still bought it. There was clearly an interest in the game, whatever its state of affairs, on those devices. And so people bought it. And so capitalism gonna be capitalism. You can hardly blame them for doing this. Can you imagine some board member being like, oh yes, uh, we could charge $50 and get X amount of additional money, but how about we just make it cheaper out of kindness? That's not how companies work. And depending upon like the laws of a particular region, it can actually be illegal to do that. Just to hamper the success of your company for kindness or moral reasons or whatever. Like, it, So I've heard these things, right? You have responsibilities to the shareholders and whatnot of depending upon the company. I'm not saying that's particularly why Rockstar did it or what have you. I'm just saying like, depending upon the context, you couldn't just be like, hey, everything cheaper for no reason. Do I think it's shit? Yeah, of course I think it's shit. I would like everything to be as affordable as possible so as many people can experience any games that they want to uh, experience. But certainly these games usually are sold at a cheaper price in regions that have less disposable income. And of course, for those who really can't afford it, there's of course always piracy. Not that I'm gonna get to discuss piracy right now or advocate for it in any capacity. I'm, I'm just saying, if you're a person who has no money, who's dying, I don't really think you should worry about the bottom line of some multi-billion dollar company. And while yeah, the cost of making games these days is going Going up, the amount of people who play games has also massively increased. These companies are not in dire straits. They're having record profits, right? They don't need to up these prices. It's simply that they can, and they know they can get away with it. You need more games like Baldur's Gate 3 coming out, giving people other options, other games to play, competition in those spaces to prevent companies just continuing to increase those prices to degrees that they don't have any need to. But games are hard to make and they take a long time to make and they are a gamble. The games that get successful make a ridiculous amount of money. It's a difficult industry, a very, very, very profitable industry, but a difficult one. Honestly though, a lot of people's issues with paying these kind of prices for games is because of the state that they release in. Like if I told you, you have to pay a hundred bucks for this game, but you'll enjoy it for the next fucking year. Like, it'll, it'll make your life. Of course you're willing to pay that money, right? It's just sometimes you can pay $60 for a game that takes four hours to finish. In other cases, you can pay $60 for a game that you'll be playing for the next six months. The amount of value given to the consumer is not necessarily the pure determinant of what the price of the game is. Linus Tech Tips offers insight into upcoming changes after their controversy. So Linus Tech Tips, both Linus himself and the company have come back after nine days and they've largely reiterated what they said in the apology that they made before. But they're like, hey, yo, we're committing ourselves to, you know, making things better and addressing all the problems that people have raised. We're going to slow things down, be more committed to not releasing videos. If uh, there's even a suggestion that something is wrong, we'll hold that video back until it's perfect. No more rush, rush, rush. And uh, the culture at the company will be better, although he does defend the culture of the company, saying things around there are, are quite good. And the turnover rate, of the company as a whole is suggestive of that. I don't think it really said anything new. They also had their WAN show, one of the shows of all time, and uh, it was just a normal WAN show. I think I got like an hour in or something. Uh, I'll probably get to the rest later. If they addressed the dramas going around more than what they said at the beginning, I have not got to that point. But they largely said, yeah, we, we took nine days off. It took a long time to have all these conversations and have everyone vent their frustrations and uh, brainstorm about how to improve things going forward and all that jazz. Difficult conversations were had. Ultimately, if you want a better summary than this, or an, rather than a summary, the actual information, I recommend going to watch Linus's video and uh, the WAN show itself. As you can see, though, there are still many dislikes. 3.1 thousand on this WAN show. On this video, there's uh, 14 thousand. But obviously, it's overwhelming likes. As I said before, I didn't think this controversy would sink the company. And ultimately, what would happen is they would just take time off, reassess things, and hopefully improve going forward. The only thing that could truly sink them is if this happens again and again and again, and there are no real improvements. The channel being that large, it's hard to conceive of what could truly destroy something like that. Elon Musk threatens to remove the block feature from Twitter. So this might be the dumbest thing I've ever seen anyone say on Twitter. And would you believe that it came from Elon Musk? Not a shock to anyone. 
So Elon Musk tweeted out, Block is going to be deleted as a feature, except for DMs. It makes no sense. I responded to this, This is fucking dumb. You have to actively work to be this dumb. Elon Musk must be giving himself brain damage each day via drugs or blunt force trauma to avoid developing even a basic understanding of social media. Obviously blocking has a purpose on the website. That's why people use it so frequently. This, this feature makes no sense. It's just like every single fucking user utilizes it for a particular purpose. I mean, but, but how could it be a useful feature to the user base? I mean, <laughs> ultimately it just acts as a barrier to entry for people who post abusive, obscene shit underneath posts. Like all the time, People will post random pornography or personal information like my address will on rare occasion be posted under my I t my tweets. And of course, in such contexts, you hide the reply and block the person. If you don't block the person, then they can just keep spamming that shit under every single one of your posts forever. Understand, a block isn't a perfect fix. A person could still just make another account, but that takes effort. Need ad additional phone numbers and email addresses and stuff to, to sign up. And obviously reporting new accounts, they're more likely to get removed because they're new accounts. And so people realize that, oh, they're just alts or whatever, rather than accounts that have a long history of doing normal posting. And so like blocking is just a barrier to entry for abusive, obscene shit that people can post. Certainly it's used in other contexts. So you don't have to talk to some people or see certain people, or you don't have to engage with certain people. Like freedom of speech doesn't mean that everyone has to listen to you or you necessarily get a seat at the table whenever anyone else wants to speak, right? But as being pointed out, it isn't even obvious that Elon could remove blocking legally if he wanted to. So as Connor here says, if I'm not mistaken, blocking is part of the requirements to be on the app store. In the terms of service, 1.2 user generated content. Apps with user generated content present particular challenges, ranging from intellectual property infringement to anonymous bullying. To prevent abuse, apps with user generated content or social networking services must include a method for filtering objectionable material from being posted on the app, a mechanism to report offensive content and timely responses to concerns, the ability to block abusive users from the service, published contact information so users can easily reach you. Is a community notes post here. If the ability to block users was to be removed, X would be in violation of the policies of the App Store as well as the Google Play Store. They mistyped. They meant Twitter here, not X. Potentially, this could lead to Twitter being removed from these platforms. There are no such policies for web app, however. So why would Elon Musk want to remove this and pretend that this is a, a universally agreed upon thing that blocking is just pointless? To be clear, everyone is clowning on him for this. Like every side of anything you can imagine is clowning on how stupid this is. But obviously he personally is probably blocked more than anyone else. Him being one of the most public figures on Twitter that is the most controversial and the most hated, he probably is blocked to an insane degree. Probably piss him off. But also the block the blue apps that block everyone who has Twitter blue also makes Twitter Blue less valuable. It was one of the reasons why I was hesitant to have this or, or, or show it at all, because I didn't want to get blocked by a lot of these people, especially people who are potentially less disagreeable. Because at one point in time, everyone who had Blue were like the sycophants of Elon Musk. Those who follow him around so they can potentially get a whiff of his ass. People that you wouldn't care if, if you blocked, right? But now, Public figures, content creators and stuff have realized that there are enough advantages to Blue for it to make sense. It doesn't make sense for the average user, but for a person like me, who part of my business is related to engaging with Twitter, it makes sense for me to have. So it's annoying that a lot of us content creator people will get caught up in these block the Blue campaigns and these extensions that block everyone that has Blue. Regardless though, like obviously Elon can't look at that stuff as positive and he must be seeing on the back end just an insane amount increase in the amount of people being blocked and likely wants to stop that as well. Is this going to happen? I doubt it. Like Elon Musk is a moron, but he can't be this dumb. And certainly he has a stupid idea like every 15 minutes and he has to drop them when surely someone can like poke him with a stick and go, Elon, look, even this is dumb even for you, man. Just stop. <laughs> and he doesn't do it. So we'll see what happens, but I can't imagine this is going to go through, especially as a potentially being removed from app stores would uh, obviously be terrible for Twitter. I forgot that you can actually block advertisers on Twitter as well. So it's possible that Elon Musk wants to remove the ability to block so you can't block advertisers. But then again, in such a case, you'd think he would just make it so you can't specifically block advertisers if that was his only goal, but whatever. Is this new like button YouTube feature real? Is this real though? This could be like the biggest troll. I want to know if you guys have seen this before. When to fuck did YouTube add this? Does it just detect the words please like? Look at the counter. So this is a video from Simple Flips. He's a content creator who makes Mario ROM hack stuff. Well, he does a lot of uh, challenge runs in Mario, right? And so on his video here, when 
Symbol Flips says, like the video, it like highlights the like button. As much fun as I did, please like and all that stuff. Yeah, so when he says like, it highlights it. And there's this one as well, they give another example. This is from a different person. I'm out. Samurai sliced that like button. <laughs> and so it highlights there. Have you guys seen this before? I've never seen that, I've never seen that. Is anyone in chat seen this before? No, no, nope, no, damn, never noticed it. No, no, nope, nope. Like I don't traditionally ask people to like. This could just be a troll, but assume it's real. Why? You could argue that a person physically engaging with a video could make them more attached, committed to the channel or the creator, more involved in the app or something. And I guess on YouTube would think, well, they've now pressed it, they've engaged. That makes it more likely that they spend longer on the app in general. You just tried it on the same video and nothing? Uh, there's a handful of people in the comments saying they've seen it before. I don't think this is a supremely impactful, important feature, but I guess YouTube is always trying to find new ways to get people to stay on the platform longer. The odd decision of YouTube to promote its competitor, TikTok. This surprised me, right? I set my iPad accidentally to incognito mode and I was on YouTube and the first thing that popped up was an ad for TikTok. This is surely an ad that YouTube is getting paid for, right? Despite YouTube shorts being clearly in competition with TikTok, it's weird to me that they'd still be like advertising TikTok, right? Like what's the game here? Maybe they feel like the money that they're being paid is sufficient? It was also weird to me, whenever I go incognito mode, like every single thing that is shown, it has a ridiculous amount of views. So this has got 18 million views, 16 million views, 15 million views, 15 million views, 9 million views, 24 million views. All these videos down here, you can't see them, but they have a ridiculous amount of views as well. To be shown to new viewers on the platform, people without accounts or people who've just made an account, you have to be making so much money on this platform already, right? The people who are the most successful, the richest, getting the most views, get that first shot at anyone new to the platform. And it takes so long for a person using the platform for so much time, getting sick of all the people at the top to eventually get down to people who are further down the totem pole. It's unfortunate, but you can totally understand why they do that because they want to put their best foot forward. And while views are not a perfect determinant of quality, they are related to it, you know? I guess it could be possible that the ad for TikTok is coming from like Google itself. Like maybe the YouTube side of things are not controlling the ads on YouTube and it's the Google side of things that are just making broad deals and Google itself doesn't consider itself to be competing with TikTok. It's the YouTube side of things that does. Yeah, I don't know. I accidentally jinxed my GT5 Chaos Run. There was a clip from yesterday's Chaos that was pretty funny. Not a lot of people bother clipping my stream and putting it on Twitch, but Ayn does very, very rarely when there's like a chef's kiss perfect clip. And so he tweeted this seven second one out. Is down there? W key, ah, oh, this guy's pretty sturdy though. It's so good, it's just immediately after I say, this guy's pretty sturdy though. <laughs> very good. So I believe Karim and Joshua Boy, two of my mods have been going through all my clips and featuring a bunch to hopefully get them put in the system of the TikTok clone that Twitch has right now. The most views I've gotten on any clip is 5.7K and it's called blue screened. It's not even that good of a clip. The screen just turns blue and then the stream cuts. I got my first paycheck from Twitter's new partnership program. But speaking of Twitter, I recently signed up for their give me money thing. As I say, I don't think the paying of creators on the platform would necessarily make the platform more viable, at least in the short term. In part because Twitter doesn't make a lot of money already and just adding on costs doesn't seem smart to reach profitability. This in a large part because content on the platform was not the problem. There was tons of content on Twitter. The problem was getting advertisers and actually making money. Getting more content won't necessarily especially in the short term, translate to more money. You can go back in my other rambles when I talked about it. I've also noticed a huge uptick in spam on the website where there's just so many more accounts just randomly reposting like memes or other people's popular tweets and stuff. There's just so many of those accounts just firing out like 50 tweets a day to get any kind of engagement. The platform is much worse now from this change, but regardless, I signed up for it because I was like, free money, right? I'm already there if giving details of accounts is enough for me to get some money, why not? But I got my first paycheck, chat. Hey Dark Viper AU, $86.29 has been deposited into your account from Twitter ads revenue sharing. Thank you for creating on Twitter, Twitter monetization. $86, it's 
So I tweeted out, abandon all other social media platforms. Elon Musk out here paying big money. I'm gonna go buy myself a bucket of chicken to celebrate. Source, I used to be a voice actor for GTA 6 until I found out Twitter is where the real money is. To be clear, I don't know what period I'm being paid for here. It said I was eligible for a long time. So was it tabulating the money since then? Or is this only since I signed up, which was like two weeks ago or something? Regardless though, it's not a lot of money. So I felt like I should meme on it. And I'll keep you posted what my next paycheck is if I get one to tell you if it goes up or down. But it's uh, very dumb. Streaming ruined my life. So I saw a trend on Twitter yesterday. People would tweet out two pictures of themselves saying when I first started streaming versus now. And like it'd be two pictures showing like when they first started streaming and what they look like now to show like a, a difference in some way or what have you. And looking at what people had posted, I think meant to be wholesome, but I for a joke tweeted these two pictures of myself. Me looking like just a normal dude and me looking like I've been through some shit, eyes wired like holy shit what's going on. I tweeted it out and the people who tweeted the original like thread of themselves were fairly small streamers and my post was getting a lot of traction and so I deleted it because I thought I like kind of cheapened their sort of wholesome thing, right? I think they were trying to say like they've grown and become so much happier because of the streaming and I kind of went against that grain. Well, I, I liked my joke. I felt like I was cheapening something they were doing, so I deleted my post. I don't like to negatively impact people, even for a joke. But I do find it funny, the side by side of these two pictures. I'm officially recognized as a professional gamer by Twitter. One last development for Twitter. For the longest time, I had as my professional category, social media influencer, which sounds so pretentious. It sounds lame, let's say. But I saw on someone else's profile that there was a more accurate professional category that I just didn't know existed. I didn't know you could search for them. I, I thought I could only pick from the ones that were available and I social media influencer was the most accurate of the ones available. But you can search for ones that aren't shown. So I am now Dark Viper EU professional gamer. Living the dream! Can I introduce myself to everyone for the rest of my life? I'm like, uh, who are you? I'm like, I'm Dark Viper EU professional gamer. Let's go. Women get a flock, chat. They get a flock. Awful. Couldn't find voice actor, unfortunately, chat. I actually checked. It was not that. According to Twitch, GTA 5 doesn't exist. So this has been a bug that I've had for a couple of months now. Or at least it's longer than a month. Is this even worth being in rambles? I don't know, but whenever I try to set my category on Twitch to Grand Theft Auto 5, it doesn't work. So go down here, Grand Theft Auto 5. Well, it's infinitely loading now. Usually it just says not found. Grand Theft Auto 5. We could do like Noisa. See, Noisa works. We could do, what's another game? Players Unknown Battleground. That's great. But Grand Theft Auto, no results found. May you try GTA 5? No. According to Twitch, Grand Theft Auto 5 currently doesn't exist. I've been getting around this by having my boss assign it. But this has been going on for like a month, longer at least, and it still hasn't been fixed. Like, how does that happen? They just delete Grand Theft Auto 5 from the categories. People are still in the category because they just use the bots to do it, but you can't do it from the actual Twitch back end. Can't do it from OBS either. It's stupid. So this probably doesn't make that much sense as a ramble because it's like, this is dumb and it's been dumb for a while and eventually they'll fix it, hopefully. But yeah, I'm going to see a sleep physician to finally fix my sleep. So as you guys know, I have a lot of problems with sleep. I suspect I have a non 24 hour sleep wake disorder where every night my body wants to go to sleep a little bit later than the night before. Like I get into bed at the same hour every night. I don't do that every night, but when I do that, I force myself like every single night, go to bed, turn off everything, sit in my bed, try to go to sleep at like say 11 p.m. Every single night, it'll be a little bit longer before I actually get to sleep. I also can't nap. I've never been able to. It's just a thing that I can't do. So my body's fucked basically. And I've just kind of lived with this for, it's gonna be at least 15 years where I've just accepted that my time that I'm awake will just shift slowly and then like come back around. Like I'll be going to bed at like 6 p.m. Then like two weeks later, I'll be going to bed at 6 a.m. That kind of thing. I've just been dealing with this like my whole life. I don't know when I got this or why. If I do indeed have this disorder, it is more common for people who are blind than it is for people who are sighted. And it's more studied in people who are blind than people who are sighted. Maybe because I just spent so much time in, in darkness or something, not going out in the sun enough when I was younger. I, I don't know. I don't think that's it. I, I have no idea why. Regardless, I'm finally going to see myself a sleep physician, which is different from a sleep psychologist because a sleep physician can better offer drugs. But from everything I've looked up, 
there's no cure for this kind of thing if I have it. Like it might be something else. But one thing I've started to do is I downloaded an app called Shut Eye and it like records the sounds in my room when I'm sleeping. I've done it for exactly one night and apparently it recorded seven minutes of me snoring. I didn't know I snored. Try and play some for you. Like, that's not all in one go, I don't think. But like, it shows me stats of like the sound in my room over the course of the time that I slept. I don't know how it detects when I actually fall asleep, but basically I turned this thing on, tried to get to sleep. I didn't succeed for 45 minutes. And then I turned off the app and turned it back on again. And it says that it took me 23 minutes to get to sleep. So it took me over an hour to get to sleep basically. But I looked it up and apparently everyone snores. Everyone at some point snores in their sleep. It's people who consistently snore all throughout the night that have a problem. So this app says, you slept well last night, keep it up. And it says my snore frequency was low. So this is low. So like, even though it did record me snoring a handful of times, this is apparently just a regular thing that people do. At the same time though, it's given me a score of 59 out of 100. But it's not giving me like any suggestions on how to improve things. I think it needs more data before it gives suggestions. But whatever, this is an interesting experiment. And I'll keep you posted. I'll report back after a week and I'll tell you if it this has helped me in some way. But like Traxon says when you're in deep sleep and stuff, I don't know how it does that. Of course, this thing isn't free, you know. Costs 90 bucks a year. You should get a smartwatch to record it. I don't want to wear something on my wrist while I'm bloody well sleeping. Yeah, everything's a subscription now, guys. That's just how the world is. It's great. Answering your most interesting questions. Do you prefer the driving mechanics of GTA 4 or 5, such as how heavy the cars feel in GTA 4? I definitely prefer GTA 5. So one of the things I potentially disliked the most about GTA 4 was the handling of the vehicles. I know some people prefer it, may feel more realistic, but I prefer GTA 5. I'm not saying GTA 5 is perfect. Potentially the cars should have a little bit more weight than GTA 5. None of the cars feel really different in GTA 5. They would all just feel like they're like sliding around on ice, turning as instance and stuff. But I prefer that kind of responsive feel than, oh, I need to turn. That's fine. Oh. I prefer the, I want to turn now. I am turning now. I have turned. Rather than GT 4s I want to turn now. I am starting to turn. I have turned. Now that it's been some time since you've moved Rambles to a separate channel and started the Vos channel, how different is the income? Did you make more when you only had one channel or no? I actually don't know. I am paying Regario more. So I personally am making less money, 100%. Whether the content as a whole is making more or less money, I don't know. I would assume it'd be somewhat the same. Because before, like I was doing a lot more work. And so I took more money. But now Regario is doing more work, so he gets more money. In fact, because I knew that the channel wasn't going to make any money at, in the beginning, rather than doing the sort of rev share deals that I normally do, I just paid him a flat rate per video. A different rate for the podcast episodes themselves and the individual episodes in between. And should the channel ever start making enough money, we'd go back to the revenue share deal. So then his revenue will grow with the success of the channel. But the only reason why the revenue on that channel might be the same as the revenue the Rambles were getting on the main channel is because the Rambles channel uploads more videos. Before I was sort of limiting myself on the main channel to one video a day. And so at most I could upload like 15 Rambles in a month. And even then that was usually unlikely. There might be like 10 at most. But on the Rambles channel, they can upload one a day and like an, an individual video on a particular topic. There's large piles of trash in the oceans of Los Santos and I keep mentioning it in the facts and glitches suggestions. So why hasn't it been in a video? I suspect a lot of people are probably like this, frustrated that their thing that they submitted didn't make it in. But I know for a fact that like the tires, the huge amount of tires in the ocean, that's already been in facts and glitches. If there is other piles of trash, is that interesting? The tires were included because it's a reference to something in real life. I can't remember the exact story, but there's some place where they put like a bunch of tires hoping to achieve some effects, blah, blah, blah. Trash isn't particularly interesting. So even if that's something that your particular thing hasn't been included in the series before, it doesn't mean it's going to be included. Wells says it's common knowledge. Can you find my old videos about religion or politics anywhere? No. The first like 200 rambles or something which were of varying quality. They weren't the same as what exists today. Some of them were just individual topics that lasted like three minutes or something. Others were clips of my live streams, but that weren't particularly edited, that kind of thing. They were all broken down and any topic that still had relevance today was re-uploaded in a new episode of Rambles as like additional stuff. There is somewhere like 36 hours 
of rambles about like politics in general, but a lot of it related to like uh, various elections in the past, Trump and all that jazz. Not stuff that I like to um, comment on that much these days. And most of it now being out of date, not relevant. You know what's something easy to find? The like and subscribe button. So be sure to hit those. Thank you for watching and I wish you all the best.